Everybody welcome. After a brief hiatus, we are back with the official visit featuring the one and only, the king of recruiting, Zach Blostein. I'm here with Kevin Little, Coach AB. I'm Trey Rowland. And more importantly, the guest of honor, 2025 Florida State quarterback tr commit, Tramel Jones Jr. Tramel, how you doing tonight, man? Thank you for joining us. Doing good, doing good. Just glad to be on here. Thank you guys for having me. We're good to have. We're happy to have you, man. It's it's been a, it's been a fun time. You've been recruit. You've been committed to Florida State since I believe April first. So yeah. if you could, could you just kind of like describe your relationship with Florida State? What made what made them stand out? You got offers from Louisville, University of Florida, Georgia Tech, other schools. What what made you want to commit to Coach Mike Norvell on April first? Uh, just a relationship. Um, them always just reaching out to my coaches personally because they can't talk to me, but reaching out to my coaches, trying to get me up there all the time. Um, just pretty much uh, setting in stone that I'm the number one guy. Um, just keep building that relationship. It's really not like that anywhere else. So I just moved up. This is the place I wanted to be. Well, so what was your knowledge of like Florida State? You're from the Jacksonville area. Were you a Florida State fan growing up? Did you know yeah. anything about Mike Norvell, like when he was in Memphis? Anything about Florida State's offense? What's your, I guess, what's your relationship with the school and the fan base? Um, I've been to a couple games. I've been to games when I've seen games a long time ago. I've been watching Florida State for a long time. I really didn't know about Coach Norvell and Coach Topars at Memphis, but when they came, that's when I started to really get to figure things out about them. They pretty much run a similar offense to what we have at Mandarin, but just they just tweak it a little bit more, a little bit more advanced. But, I mean, it really just fits my playing style and what they have going on in the future. Okay. Well, how would you describe your playing style? And some of the similarities between what we do, what you guys do at Mandarin and what they do at Florida State? Uh, pass first. I mean. Okay. I'm trying. I'm, I'm really trying to get out the pocket a little bit more this year, but I'm really a pass first guy. Run to throw the pass. Um, I mean, we pass more. I probably pass like 30 times a game. Okay. okay. So, but we have some electric running backs. So we'll see this year. Trying to get the ball in their hands in open space. So we'll see this year. So is the offensive similarity is that is that something you picked up on, or is that something like Norvell brought Both. up to you in recruiting, or? Both, to be honest. I mean, I remember Coach Tokar was talking about it in, um, in a meeting before because he has a good relationship with our head coach. So they're always talking about how they have these, these things similar in their offense and what they do. I mean, we take some things away from them also. Right. We're approaching a year since you, you got offered by Florida State back in uh, July of 2022. Just can you kind of explain how that offer unfolded and, and just what what was that moment like for you? I mean, it was a surreal moment. I've been to Florida State probably like five times before I received the offer. Just being able to showcase what I have and my talents at that camp, it just showed them that I can really be the guy for them. And it was just a great moment to have that offer. I always have this question because I, I know I'm going to get the, the same answer because I've gotten it every time, but I want to see if I can ever catch Big Mike slipping. What is the energy level? Is he on all the time? And I'm guessing the answer is yes. And what's his energy level when you commit to Florida, the Florida State Seminoles for Mike Norvell? That's just got to be <laughs> off the charts, man. Just describe. Have you ever caught him like, like wiping crust out of his eye, drinking some coffee? Like taking never. a yawn? Never. Never. Never seen him yawn. Has he ever yawned? Never. <laughs> always, on, he's always on go, always on one hundred percent. When I committed, he kind of like broke his desk almost. He was banging on the desk. It was going <laughs> crazy, and was yelling and screaming. So it was a pretty exciting moment. And then, what, what about Coach Tokars? What's he like? I he, obviously it's he, he hasn't been a, a quarterback coach for that long, but he's done a great job with guys like Jordan Travis. What's his demeanor like? Coaching style? Have you guys got to watch any film together? Oh, we have. Uh, he's kind of a low-key chill guy, but when it comes to that moment on the field when he's coaching, he's putting all his heart and soul into it. He's He gets a little bit more loud on the field. I've seen mm -hmm. it firsthand, but he's more of a laid-back guy, chill guy, more like a a mentor to us, like a brother to us. So that's a really good thing to have. Okay. And before we get to the film, just one kind of one last question. Obviously, the 2025 recruiting class that you're a part of Florida state is starting to lay in some really good groundwork on that class. Obviously you being the centerpiece. 
What is your role in recruiting the other guys to join that class? And what has Coach Norvell told you about quarterback recruiting for 2025? Or did, are, they, are they speaking to any other ones? Are you the only one in the class? Um, it's pretty mutual right now. Uh, when the last time I came, he was just telling me that there will be a, no other 2025 quarterback stepping in his office. Nice. So, I mean, I guess that speaks for itself. So, But in terms of the whole class, I've been hitting up a lot of guys about Florida State and they've been saying a lot of great things about it. want to get back on campus and how they're in their top schools. Anybody you want to name or you want to keep that under? You want to keep that I, under the I, radar I, I, for now? I, I'll keep it under the radar for now. It'll unfold in, in a little while. Understood. I got complete confidence. Your confidence has given me confidence. So let's talk about what everybody wants to hear about. Kevin, will you pull up the highlights? Tramel, we're going to bring it up. We're going to look at your highlights from Huddle. Just we'll set the table for you. Just kind of describe what what you're seeing, pre-snap formations, play calls, things of that nature. So so Tramel, before we get into it, is is there a, a player you particularly look up to? Is there a name we should have in mind when we're watching these films who you're who you're kind of crafting your game out? I really like Jalen Hurts. Ah, <laughs> there he is. That's a good role but, model. He's he's a good ball player. Yeah, I like Hurts. What do you what do you like about his game? Uh, the ability to extend plays, his ability to know where he's going with the ball before he before the play happens. The ability to go through reads and use his feet, of course. So 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 walk us through this play. What's going on here? Uh, I can see it's all out blitz. We've been. Well, I remember this. I remember this play like it was yesterday. I remember um, earlier in the week we were saying this is going to come, so we wanted to have a slot fade here. So I signaled it to the guys before the play happened, but I don't think they really picked up on it. So they just did our default rules, which is which is the um, expand block. They didn't see it, so I was I was taking my steps to throw the fade automatically because the corner had his eyes inside. So mm-hmm. Once I knew it was man, they were both level, so I knew it was man. So number nine should be able to beat him with no problem, but they didn't end up running it, and I saw it, and I knew we were down by, like, two scores at that time. I think it was, like, early in the second quarter, so I knew I needed to make a play, even though it was second down. So, and that's so what is, happened. is this kind of like a package play where we're in a certain situation, you might hand it off here versus throwing it, or is it yeah, always RPO. throw? It's RPO. Yeah, it was RPO. Okay, we pre-snap just, or yeah. post-snap? Both. Both. Okay. Yes, sir. Yeah, so the play gets blown up. There's a blitz. And what's your thought process here? Right here, I can hear everybody in the background <laughs> telling me to throw it away, throw it away. <laughs> but I just kept with it. Some I got, go upfield, made a play. When you go to the sideline after this play, you know, you, you're speaking about the miscommunication. What's your, what's your job as the leader of the offense? When you go to the sideline, you know, guys missed your signals. What are you doing when you get over there? I'm just like, I'm just like guys, you got to push through adversity. Even though we're tired, you still got to pay attention to what is going on and uh, look at the line. So. Yeah. yeah. You, we'll make sure we don't bust another bust another signal, exactly. right? Exactly. <laughs> are you so giving them a signal get, or are they just – Coach is yelling at somebody, probably you. I was, I was them, giving right? them a I was, I, And I was, called, I was saying the concept name too. Um, <laughs> and they were like – like, yeah, dude, we got you. It's all good. <laughs> all worked out just fine. Yeah, I think that's one thing that stood about your film when I watched it the first time. Is I mean, you're clearly athletic, but you're always looking looking downfield, and that's a pretty advanced trait, man. Yes, sir. Another your, slot fade. What happened? No, I was going to say, are your recent uh, measurables that are listed six six footers? Are these are those still accurate, or are you have you grown some? I, me- I measured in, so I went to the Florida Gator uh, seven on seven, but they like pulled me to the side and took my measurables. But I was uh, I was six foot and three fourths. I was uh, one ninety four. So right, that's good. Still growing. That's a dime. Yeah, this, this is a good. Tell me, tell me what you're looking at here, man. So it's another slot feed here. Uh, we seen them team. They were running like a one high look, and we put that we put empty look. And I put our running back into the slot to hold the safety a little more. And we can see it, it's man. It's on different levels, mm-hmm. so we knew our guy was one on one right here. Is this your stud receiver? Is this your go to guy? Is that, Jam- is that Jamie? Uh, no, that's not Jamie. He's a senior. Okay. There you see, you see, you got a safety over top over there, Jamie. But mm-hmm. this guy was just one on one. We wanted this matchup all night because we knew. 
that I think it was like number 12, couldn't stick him. And he okay. held the safety. And uh, our running back, that was an empty hill, the safety just enough. So I could, you put that ball in a perfect spot, too. Yeah, this yes. is a great but, ball. Got it away from the safety in a, pl- in a place where only your wide receiver can go get it. Uh, you keep it out of harm's way. This is a, this is a hell of a throw. Do you guys see a lot of man coverage? Yeah. Um, yeah, we. it depends. I think just because we were backed up into the end zone and it was on third down, and we needed like 12, I think. So I think they went man. And then uh, Seminole, they just run a lot of man because they have a lot of athletes on the field. So. When you're coming to the line of scrimmage, how are, how are you IDing things? What, where do your eyes go to first? Uh, I go to boundary safety first, wherever he's lining up. If the boundary, it depends on the boundary and free. If the boundary is in the middle, then I know it's either one or three. If the free is in the middle, I know it's one or three. If they're both split, then I know it's either four or two. But going into like film study, I will know where they're lined up at. It will end up being quarters or if they're going to roll to three or two, depending on where the mic is. Yeah. What were you saying, Trey? I was going to say, Tremel, we're two we're two highlights in, and I see two vertical throws. That has to be something when you're watching film with Coach Tokars and Coach Norvell. Is that something that they emphasize to you when they're when they're showing you plays of Florida State's offense? Because we love to go over the top after we suck them in with the running game. Is that something that they've talked to you about? Oh, they're always they love to go up top. I mean, they're always their run game is so dynamic, so mm-hmm. they just keep piling it down your throat and then take you over top. That's one of the things they love to do. But yeah, they always I, that for sure. I don't have the stats on this at hand, but I mean, slot fade's got to be probably their favorite passing play. Got to so be. It's they probably love that. The first two plays in your film were, were slot fade. Well, yeah, man, you really tried to call to. the audible. They didn't do it. You're running it on the point five yard line in the shed, going <laughs> going open set. I, I like I, I like watching the offense so far. What's going on here, Tremel? Uh, we have option routes here, but our coaches just like take them vertical. They can't guard you vertically. So. <laughs> I, think I went I went like fifteen for fifteen the first half. And this was the first half, and Jamie got like he was like nine for nine for this game. So we have verticals. He, he could have sat it down, could have ran a comeback. We have um, options on both sides with a dig from the eights. But he could have sat it down, saw he capped it. So I just, and then the safety is in the middle, which I know he can't run the post from the Z position. Mm-hmm. So he capped. So I just stayed on this side. So he was capping off and just threw it back shoulder. The nice, nice thing is, and I, I think maybe an underrated part of your game is your accuracy. You throw this ball in a spot where it's going to allow him to get up the field afterwards and score this touchdown. That's not something I think people would think about a lot on a, on a back shoulder throw like this, but it's, it's super impressive to me. Yeah, this is, this is a really nice, really nice ball. So you're saying that you have an option up here and an option down here. Yes, sir. And what this just converts to a, to a yeah. comeback. He, he that can run a post comeback or, um, or a go, but since he has, already has inside leverage, he can take away the post. And either convert to that accuracy that Adam was referencing, Tramel, is that something that's always been like an innate strength in your game? Is that something you've had to develop? And how how much a a time like per week, like sometime in the offseason, are you spending like working on your craft and your mechanics? I mean, we have practice every day. So I'm trying to throw Jamie, trying to get the time down to receivers. We have a, I think all of our receivers are, 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 are the same except number nine, which we call the corner here. He was a senior, but all our receivers are pretty much the same. And I see these guys seven on seven off season. So mm-hmm. I mean, you got the chemistry down like it's nothing. So it's pretty easy to have my guys running. And I've known these guys since I was little too. So we've, we've came up together. So what, what's going on here? Got a smash concept, man. Once again, yep. <laughs> I don't know why guys like to run man against us. Like, yeah, but seems like a bad wants, idea so far. I think the challenge in you, if I'm being completely honest. No, wow, but yeah, you man, wrong, right? Yes, sir. Yeah, sophomore starting quarterback. It's hard to hard to blame him for wanting to to put yeah, the screws sense, on you. Makes sense from a defensive perspective to try to challenge a sophomore quarterback, but you're doing exactly it's, what you should be doing. But you have corner here, slant, sit outside, sprint out. Mm-hmm. I kind of when I was rolling, I peaked him like cut. And like the the DB just went another way, so I just gave him a chance because I knew the corner wasn't on him. So like right here, I just seen the corner. Like I don't know where he went. 
I How hard is it not drop your eyes here and see that rush right in your face? It's it was kind of tough because spring. I, I remember back in spring, <laughs> I used to drop my eyes like really fast. Like I used to see a guy like yeah. come free, and I used to just drop my eyes and try to run instead of being the blitz with the quick hitter. So. Well, I was going to say, I think it speaks to what you talked about earlier. You're a, you're a guy who wants to throw the ball first. I, mean, I think a lot of quarterbacks, and you talked about modeling yourself after um, Jalen Hurts. I, I'm a diehard Eagles fan, so I, I have watched all of Jalen Hurts' plays as an Eagle and his mm-hmm. first season at, with, with the Philadelphia Eagles. When there was a rush that flashed in front of him, he took off and ran. Mm-hmm. I think you had a situation there where you could have run, and it was impressive that you kept your eyes downfield and threw the ball. Yes, sir. All right, Tremel, what do we got here? We're playing against Bartram Trail. Looks like oh, we're going over the middle here. Is that something that you guys do? Obviously, a lot of the stuff we've seen more the flashy, like going vertical. How often do you guys go over the middle in that manner in offense? And is that something you're comfortable with at this stage of your career? I'm comfortable, I'm comfortable with it for sure. I mean, we, we often go down the middle on RPOs a lot. It depends on who we play. Like if we have great talented corners outside, we'll hit digs off the play action. But here we just I just saw that my that my bubble wasn't gonna be there to the left because of the how they were playing it. So I just decided to read the flat defender and if he came down, then I was taking it. This guy? This is who you're looking yes, at. Sir. Yes sir. As a sophomore, how much control do you have over like pre snap like checks and audibles? Do you have a pretty like a lot of autonomy in your offense right now, or is a lot of it dictated just because honestly your youth in the system? I mean, he gives me a lot of freedom. It looks yeah. like it. And I think that's a smart <laughs> choice. And you're making some good choices so far. So he gives me a lot of freedom. <laughs> right, let's see what happens here. Uh, nice, nice big old wide open touchdown happens here. <laughs> Yeah, they were running uh, stress coverage, kind of like a yeah. special coverage where the uh, safety has three vertical, and you see his eyes is on three. So two ran a seam, and the corner really wasn't paying attention to the seam because he had, he's kind of like reading what two is doing, but he didn't get there fast enough. So I just tried to put it on him. So it looks like. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah. So it, the he's really locked in on right now. Yeah. Like, yeah. Mechanically, though, it seems like you kind of get off, a little off balance there, but yeah. you're still able to have the arm strength to get the ball where it needs to get to. Yes, sir. That was one of my things that I'm trying to work on following through with throw, even though there's pressure in my face, just so I won't lose mm-hmm. that much more velocity on the throw. Are you working with anybody? You work with anybody in the all season, or you just work with your coaches there at your high school? Uh, Will Hewlett, I work with okay. Will Hewlett mostly, but just just being that coming natural. I mean, you have to be able to get used to taking a hit and throwing mm-hmm. the ball. So that's a good that thing. Jamie right there. Yeah, it was Jamie. <laughs> we were coming in, just wanting to get him in space. So that's what we did. He got upfield. Did what Jamie does. I know FSU fans are going to ask or wonder, I guess, but uh, he's making a decision later this month. How are you feeling about him? I'm feeling good. I mean, I know he's high on Bama, but I'm feeling, I'm feeling like we have a, a great chance just because of the relationship that he has with Coach Dugan. Coach Dugan consistently talks to him. So, I mean, we'll see when that day comes. For sure. And if you guys are wondering who we're talking about, it's five-star receiver Jamie French, who's also – a 2025 prospect that FSU badly wants in their class. That's the guy who Tremel is hitting in stride all the time to set up <laughs> all those nice yards after catch. You're making his highlights look pretty good, man. He owes he owes you a little bit. <laughs> yeah, no. Dude, oh, when I, speaking when, of throws, when Brendan and I, yeah, when Brendan and I went over to watch Tremel in his spring game, um, it was just a, a highlight reel between him and Jamie consistently. I mean, they threw they threw two touchdowns that were just looked effortless and. Um, that seems like it's a connection that's going to continue to uh, to be stellar. Yeah, Tremel, sure. th- these are highlights, though. Yeah. If we were to turn on some of your low lights, what are some things that you would point out that you need to continue to work on as a thrower? I say knowing each each receiver for sure, because I know different receivers have different speeds. So especially when I'm trying to throw it out the break or a timing route, I would need to 
I know how to pace myself a little bit more on my drop, um, especially when moving in the pocket and still trying to deliver the ball on time. I feel like it's a big point in my game. I'm kind of late after moving in the pocket and trying to deliver a throw. I'm a little late, which can sometimes lead to incompletions. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it seems like sometimes it looks like sometimes your motion gets a little elongated when you got to move your feet. I'm sure that's something you probably work on all the time with your with your quarterback coaches. And you know, here, beautiful. I mean, that's a in rhythm throw, yeah. boom, boom. But it's yeah. natural. I mean, again, yeah. this is sophomore film, man. You you got a lot of a lot of great football ahead of you. For sure, always doesn't come perfect. Boom, 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 every time. So, nope. <laughs> now you're you're. Yeah, th- there's a lot of really advanced things going on here, especially for a sophomore. And here's your favorite play. Once again, man, I don't know what it is. <laughs> what when is your favorite they, play? When will they learn? I don't know. Teams that we play in, like, St. John's County, they run more of, like, quarters and special coverages, palms, anything like that. Mm-hmm. They, that's when they run them. But, like, any teams in Duval County, you like to play man. But they'll learn. They'll learn soon. You got to give this well, team credit. I mean, they're playing. They're play, They're playing two man on you. They've They've yes. got a lot of guys out in coverage here. Mm-hmm. What What are you seeing pre snap that makes you want to take the shot? I'm seeing a guy that's that runs a four four versus a linebacker. That really <laughs> <can't work>. so, <laughs> Dude, Norvell loves that answer because his offense is all about matchups. So when when he spoke to him, and I tell you what, that kid's got a great move off the line. That is something that's extremely impressive. Now you talked about you see a lot of zone, you see a lot of man. What what as a quarterback, what are the different ways that you attack those coverages? Uh moves depends on how the corner lines. Right right here, they're running quarters, but their their rules and regulations is he's reading two. So if two breaks out, uh the safety's gonna throw over top and he's gonna crash down. So we came out of half with this play. Do you, have, yeah. what, do you have a name for this? this there's a this is a very common. Uh, I wouldn't thing. want to say the name out loud. This <laughs> or, I'll make him give up trade <laughs> secrets, Kevin. Oh, no, no, yeah, 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 nice, you pass the play. test. Kevin's yeah. very curious. Uh, they call it palms. It's, yeah, the, that's the, palms. the common name for the coverage. Palms. Uh, looks like a bomb to me, man. <laughs> well, the off the offensive play is different. It's like a a slot fade. Yeah, or not slot fade. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Whatever it is different for every offense, what they call it. Did you guys throw that, that little? Did you guys throw that arrow a lot in the first half? Yes, we did. Off of RPO though, yeah, it was okay. off of RPO. Okay. So, so you, so you guys had this set up after halftime. For sure, we were just like, I'm gonna pump fake that out and just give my guy a chance with the safety. And again, it's another ball in the spot that it needs to be in, so the only he can really make a play on the football. Yeah, man, I, I know why Mike offered you so long ago. Like these are just a lot. Of, these are just a lot of dimes being dropped. Uh, what, what's happening here, Kev? Go back to the start of the play. What do you see pre-snap here? Uh, it looks like man once again, <laughs> man, <laughs> man once again. First and ten. It's a uh, four verts, four verts. Since it's man, and they don't really have a QB spy on me. I mean. It was a great time to take off once and once again. And then the time was winding down, so I didn't want to waste any type of time. So this guy had to bounce quickly. So really was this, kept, was this part of the running. play call? No. It was just something I saw. It just came open immediately, so I just took it. Gotcha. I, I think that's wise, man. I mean, you, you've talked about wanting to be pass first, pass first, pass first, but uh, knowing when to be pass first and when to when to break that rule is important. <laughs> I think I think that's a good call here. How do you develop those situational skills for a kid that's got the arm talent and the accuracy that you do? That's something you want to work on is your situational running. How do you work on that? Is it, does it take just game and practice reps? Is it is it film study or combination of the two? How do you get that more ingrained in your mind that using your legs is an option being the athlete that you are? I feel like it comes with also coaching. My coaches also help me a lot. When it comes mm-hmm. to situational things, because that just doesn't come natural. Situational things sometimes just don't come natural. So, I mean, just them helping me throughout practice, throughout watching film. I mean, they're just like 
when you see these type of things and then not having a QB spy to take off. So I'm just remembering those things, taking notes and, and meetings so I can be able to um, implement that in my game. Oh man, this might be the best on the in the tape. This is a dime. This is a seed right here. Rolling to your left. I don't think anybody will ever understand how difficult this is. Throw across your body and dot yeah. this on the back pylon. While getting hit. Yeah. That's off, man. That's off. Uh, yeah, what do you do? What do you do in that situation? Roll into the opposite, like roll into the opposite side. Well, how do you get how do you get the necessary strength into that throw? Is it a technique thing or is it just I got a big arm. I can make it. Like, what? What are you? What are you thinking here? Because you know off the bat that this is a tough throw from jump. Got to get your shoulders to the target for sure. I mean, uh, we knew Jamie, it was man on the goal line. Jamie has to win one one on the corner, so I had to get my shoulders to the target immediately because I knew they didn't have a lot of space to work with, and I knew it was just a lot of. I knew it was just that little time. So as soon as I got around that DN, I had to get my shoulders around and make the throw. I didn't. I didn't even see. The dude in front of me, it was like I didn't even see him. It was just like I threw it and somebody just hit me. Was, <laughs> like a ghost or something? Yes, I don't know. And then I, I, I don't know. You, did oh, this job coming, you got this your shoulders around you did a nice job of coming downhill on that throw, belly button at the target. Like that's 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 a that's a good throw right there. That's a dot. Oh, this is another slot fade. <laughs> You're getting a lot it's of to say slot fade is your favorite throw in football. <laughs> It's 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 the easiest throw to just get my guy a chance. This is a fourth and one. Uh, slot fatal wow. fourth and one. Wow, that's a lot of faith they're putting in you. Yeah, a lot of faith. Yeah, that's why. Um, really, really nice. Is there a, okay? So, is there a moment when you're watching Florida State games from last year? Obviously, it was a year where kind of Mike Norvell's vision is starting to coalesce. Right, a lot of ten win season, a lot of offensive, a lot of offensive success. Is there a moment from last year watching this season where it's like I cannot wait to like in, in your head? You obviously hadn't committed yet, but where you really saw yourself could be a very uh, an asset in this offense. Is there a time from the season that sticks out? As soon as I saw LSU, mm -hmm. as soon as I saw them running the slot fade, as soon as I saw how they implementing a running quarterback and how he started throwing his development from last year, and then I say Clemson. I like Clemson, and then just being able for them to be able to, and then also Louisville when they had Tate come in. Right. Yeah. A lot of RPO stuff there. I mean, you see that exactly. it's kind of the duality of the Norvell offense. You had the slot fades with the LSU and then a lot of the RPO stuff. Do you, uh, yeah. Tramel, do you have, obviously you're, you're still a couple years away from getting on campus at Florida state. Do you have a relationship with a guy like Jordan Travis? Have you gotten to communicate with him during your visits or do you also, do you communicate with the quarterback committed in this class? Luke Croman Hawk. Do you, do you communicate with those guys at all? I've said something to uh, Jordan Chaz before. we got communication before. I have a lot of communication with Luke just because we've been to six points together. Oh, um, great. There for a, I met him like three years ago but before like he was a receiver. Before like eighth grade, his eighth grade year, uh -huh. we started at six points together. But um, I got a lot of communication with Brock Glenn, especially when I got the hands-on oh. practice. He was just walking me through the plays and anything that was going on in the field. So – that was a great thing to have, a great mentor to have. What'd you think of a, what'd you think of like a Mike Norvell practice? How'd you think about how they were run? Did it was it eye opening? Uh just describe what you saw there. Um, very intense. It was different than the year before, way more intense. I feel like we also had my coaches there, so they were like, dang, we need to run our practices like this. So <laughs> now we, we have we up tempo practices and they they really take pride in not wasting any time. Anything has to be on time. We have a play clock now. So everything is just timed, and it was very intense. And I just love the way it was ran. Okay, I like that. Kev, do we got any more film for him to watch? We I feel like more I could. Be, I was gonna say I could watch like slot fades against man coverage all day <laughs> uh, because <laughs> nobody's learning yet. Uh, what do we have here, Tramel? Um, I think oh, hey, slot fade, slot fades again. It looks like, <laughs> yeah, slot fades again. I could have took it just because the safety was off, but you see. Third and was that like fifteen? Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So it had to be a play had to be made to get the first down. So the play was made to get the first down, and we kept moving the drive. Again, running to the left, 
Make a good throw. So it seems like your your receivers are taught in the scramble drill to to kind of to go upfield. Mm-hmm. Is that I mean, you guys rep? No, it's like a natural thing. I kind of like uh, I really think I'm really thankful for them to be able to do that for me. Get up, be, be aware of the situations, the surroundings. I mean, you're you're making life easy on them. It's easy easy to beat man coverage if you got 15 seconds to to run around. <laughs> There you go. That's the ball in the open space. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yep. Throw him on the upfield shoulder. Let him is, run after the catch. Is that a harder throw than it looks as far as with the placement and everything like that? Explain why that is because I see you shaking your head. Like that's one that I think people – you see it under, over, thrown in the dirt all the time. Why is that a difficult throw for a quarterback to make? you got to be able to have quick feet, get your feet in the ground, deliver the ball as quick as possible so they can get upfield. Be able to see what's happening from, them, especially if a receiver misses the block. You don't want them to get blindsided or anything like that. But sometimes if you're moving too fast, you're going to be off balance, and that's when the ball sails, goes in the dirt. Do you lace it? Yeah, I was going to say, you ever throw those with no laces? Yeah, I have to throw with no laces, to be honest. And my center, he does a great job of, like, snapping it to where it's, like, not, like, crazy mm-hmm. on my hand. So... Good that center love. That's right. We always like that here on the old Knowles 24 seven YouTube, the underappreciated position, not because I played it in high school or anything like that. <laughs> what's, what's going on here, Tramel? Uh, so another bit of opportunity to run. So I can is designed run it. or is this something that you saw like right off snap? Just something I saw. What this did you stuff. see that made you take off immediately? I'm trying to think what this, what this play was tough from this angle, right? Yeah, I, think, I think just because of, Usually when we call a running back, a running back um, play out the backfield, I think it was a, um, a option play by our ace receiver. So yeah, Jamie ran. Yeah, Jamie ran a glance. So yeah, it was an option play. I just saw they drop eight. So did they drop eight? I don't think they dropped eight, but they dropped. But it, I just didn't like what I saw. Yeah, they, no, mm-hmm. they, dropped, they dropped seven. <laughs> seven. They dropped seven. But I just like what I saw. So I just took off and it was an easy first down. Is Jamie always open? I keep seeing that hand up. Is he always open? He always does that. No matter. <laughs> Hands up. A consummate wide receiver, man. I'm always open. Just give me the ball. <laughs> this is a tough throw. What do you see here? Um, Flood, uh, our tight end, he's never, I think, he's never gotten a reception his whole high school career. So I was like, it's gonna be his first time being able to get the ball. Oh, I love you know? that man. I love so that. So I was like, I was turning around quickly to get him the ball, and it looks like the flat defender runs up to him pretty quick. So I just go straight to my my out route, and then you know catch him again upfield. Yeah, just casually uh, go into your second read, twenty yards downfield on the run. Yeah, Kev, what do you think about that, man? You're you're a you know a student of quarterback play. What do you think about being able to make a quick read that quickly, even with the prospect to get number four, his first career catch? Like a lot of people might try to force it to him. What do you think about that play, just from an analyst perspective, Kevin? I mean, it, it, it's I mean, it's interesting that you're saying that this was your first read. That's that's atypical. Um, usually, you read deep in, but I mean, mm-hmm. if you're trying to get him with the ball, I, I kind of get it. This guy's usually open. Uh, they do a good job of covering it, and I think you do a good job of. If you waited another half second, this ball's probably picked off. But you made a quick, quick decision. You're releasing the ball before he even breaks, which is something. I mean, that's that's again an, an advanced thing, right? You watch uh, a lot of high school quarterbacks. They they wait for the guy to be open before they release the ball. So the fact they're able to to kind of go to a second read and and throw it here, yeah, that's a good sign, man. I I think. I think if if you can be at a if you're at a point where you're consistently being able to quickly move to a second read in high as a sophomore in high school, you're setting yourself up for success. How is that? How do you build that anticipation, Tramel? Is it mostly chemistry with receivers, or is it maybe uh, being more comfortable and knowledgeable of the playbook, kind of knowing what everybody's doing? Where where do, where do you get that kind of anticipation built in? Uh, knowing what everyone's doing, I think okay. just because we rep it so much throughout the week. I know, I know, like the back of my head. So it's just knowing where everyone's gonna be, where, when, and where they're gonna be. So this is a good thing to have. It's just a, 
easy. Yeah, I was about to say this might be the easiest RPO read I've ever seen. <laughs> yeah, that's a lot of space there for the old slot guy. <laughs> but the, I mean, it shouldn't be underestimated. People see these RPOs and they think it's easy, but I mean, you have to go from this play fake to resetting your feet and making a throw. Mm-hmm. You guys rep this in practice a lot? A lot, a lot. Just different scenarios like, say for instance, number six, I think it's like the star defender, flat defender, like at the beginning of the play, if he would have blitzed to the field and I would have threw my expand right away, and then he would have been, that block could have been a one-on-one off to the races. Mm-hmm. But since he didn't, he was, his, his width was too wide. So I just went to the other side. So, no, obviously you guys these, have, I was going to say, it. obviously these clips are, are from the fall, but, um, you know, after spring ball and just, you know, some of your off season training, do you feel like there's any areas of your game that have grown, um, since, since your sophomore year? Um, I would say pushing the ball deeper downfield. Five miles to, deeper yeah. downfield. We're going up the top more. I love it. I just feel like it just went up a little bit more. We're going to be pushing vertical a little bit more. I feel like we pushed vertical enough, but we're going to be pushing vertical more because we also we got another guy in. He runs a four four, but he's so when when Jamie when Jamie's getting triple team, I have other receivers <laughs> to go to. But didn't you guys just get another O lineman too, Derek Plaz? Right? Yep, we got Plaz. Great pickup for us. I think he just committed to Miami, but. I think he might be still. Who knows, right? Keep that mystery. Go to Knowles247.com to find out the stories Tremel is hinting at. Can't say too much, but. No, man, don't get in trouble. <laughs> so this oh, is an interesting it. play, Tremel. Uh, tell me about it. What's going on? Uh, I, threw off, I threw off the blitz. Uh, it was kind of funny to me because when the safety came down, he was outside. So, And the guy and our running back, he has an option play. He read this consistently like probably the most drop practice he has an out glance where he can sit it down but since that guy blitzed right away i knew where he was going to do and he was outside so it was just a great play by the running back that's the thing about our running backs they're great with receiving that's why we go empty a lot so it's great we have Kev, let's hit a couple more plays and then we can get Tramel. I'm sure he's got more like slot fade film to watch, more practices to get to, things of that nature. Let's get a couple more. Well, I had a quick question about this play. So this kind of goes back to something you were saying earlier where there's pressure in your face. You deliver a good ball, um, but it's it's untraditional looking, right? You're, you're kind of falling back as you release it. Is that something that your coach would call out on film? Is that something you're trying to work on? This is something I'm trying to work on, to be honest. I, I really could have – he was far away from me. I could have just stayed in there, followed through, anything like that. But even when you're not really trying to get hit, it's okay to release it and take a few steps back. So, yeah, I mean, yeah, it really that's, that's fair. Situation. All right, let's 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 get you one more – one more play in here. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I like that. That's a nice throw. What's going on here, man? A lot of besides a lot of gold in your face. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, he just came free, it looks like. But my, you see Jamie with his hands up. You see him? Inside. <laughs> <laughs> Again, yeah. That's <laughs> video evidence that you are 100% correct on that. But my guys just saw the situation, got in the open space, and just had him deliver a ball to him. Do you feel like so? Do you feel like obviously Mike Norvell doesn't, and he's obviously from the recruitment of Luke Cromanhawk shown about his evaluation skills and being able to identify really good talent early. What's a what's a, an attribute of your game that you feel like maybe some people are sleeping on when they're evaluating you? Because I I, I see a lot of upside. What what do you think is one underrated quality about about your game? Uh, definitely my feet, but my arm for sure. They don't. I feel like some people think I have underrated arm strength, but I mean, it's on display to see. They'll eventually see it. But I mean, I think that's an area that they'll on. I mean, it'll come, they'll eventually see it. But those are things I think that people don't really see. They think 
I, they, I think they think that my ability to cross the game, process the game, I think they see it just off the film, but mm-hmm. that's, those are pretty much two. Uh, and you know what? I'm glad you say that because that's what honestly really jumped out to me. You're not afraid to throw in any situation. However, these are calculated decisions. What you talked about, the mechanics when you're rolling out to the left, the shoulder placement, getting everything to the ball. There's a lot. Number one, you're, you're a very naturally talented guy, but there's a lot of stuff going on upstairs to try to center yourself and make sure. So I really appreciate that. Guys, is there anything else that we'd like to ask Tramel before I kind of let him give his final chance to say anything that he'd like to to Florida State Nation? Well, Tramel, yeah. Tramel, number one, we appreciate it. Thank you for your time. I'm sure it's always fun to be hanging out with a bunch of guys in their mid thirties watching film as a high school student. You don't have anything better hey, you want to do, yourself. right? Yeah. Hey, Zach, well, I'm still I, in my 20s. you've got the you got the most older sounding voice of anybody with all that bass you got in there, brother. <laughs> But anyway, Tramel, is there anything that you would like to say as right now the centerpiece of that 2025 recruiting class to Florida State fans that are watching this before the season coming up? Any final messages you'd like to give to Seminole Nation? Stay tuned. We're going to have a great class. I mean, go knows. Oh, I love it. I love it. Stay tuned. So thank you, Tramel Jones. For Kevin Little, for Coach Adam Brown, for Zach Blostein, Trey Roland, this was the official visit featuring the guru, Zach Blostein. Listen, stay tuned. Knowles 24-7 YouTube, Knowles247.com, X's and Knowles YouTube. You are the man, Tramel. Stay tuned. It's all going to be good stuff for the Knowles coming up, and the only way you're going to see it is if you're a part of all that great stuff. For the guys, for the 2025 quarterback, I'm Trey Roland. Keep chopping.